The night before we leave for any major tournament, I come into the gym late and sit and think about how far we've came. I think about the guys and girls who've dedicated their lives to building what I believe will be a legacy. I remember when there were no mats, no students. I think about not being allowed to accept team trophies and watching kids freely walk around in the bullpen as I had to coach students winning world championships from the stands. But no matter how many people doubted, we believed. We trained every day, every second, believing that we will be the best. In 2020, we placed second at the Nogi Pans. The guys were so happy, they were all so proud, and I was happy for them. But deep down inside, I failed. I felt like I had let them down, like I had let myself down. Being the second best team in the world that day would probably be enough for most people. But it wasn't for me. I want the top spot. I want every person in the world that came from nothing to see and believe that no matter what, if you want something bad enough, you'll do whatever is necessary to make that dream a reality. You could probably ask every major Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu team's leader what they think the chances of Pedigo Submission Fighting winning the adult team title in 2021 pans are. I'd be willing to bet you, not one of them, would say we have a chance. You ask them Monday morning after the tournament though, I bet every single one of them have a different answer. We've done every single thing you could imagine to prepare. Our team has put in their time, the amount of support we have from all the teams and people out there like us, it's not something I can even put into words. Life has a way of picking certain people to represent certain groups. It's not something you really plan for, it just kind of happens. I think life has picked us to represent every person out there that has hope and dreams of building something from nothing. I believe this is our time. I believe this is the year we cement our name forever in jiu-jitsu history. You know, I feel like I've been in this spot for a while. You know, it's been a couple of years now that I've been with the crew and there's a couple of majors every year. You know, you got Nogi Pans and Worlds and stuff. And when these come along, you only get a select amount of opportunities to win something like this, you know? And being with Heath from the first time I came through and seeing him like, uh, work, he was working a full-time job and he didn't really have much. And every single day he'd be in that gym teaching. Every single day he'd, he'd spend the time with every one of those students and, and making sure that he could make them into something, you know? and where we're at now, three or four years later, and I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about it, you know, and we've got Nogi Pants in a couple of weeks, and and we basically just got off the training mat like an hour or two ago, you know, and we're tired and we're sore, and I look around the room and I and I see how hard everyone's working, you know, and, and like I talked about before, we may not think that we can beat those big guys, or we may not think they're on that level, but the reality is that we're here and, and it's something that we're gonna do, you know, and. Honestly, just thinking about the opportunity to, to solidify ourselves as one of the best teams in the world for, for Heath and for Pedigo Submission Fighting and the crew and my friends and, and the family that we've built, it's, it's absolutely incredible. You know, I'm getting emotional talking about it right now. I, I, I can't even think about seeing Heath standing up there with that trophy and having everyone looking at him and laughing, crying and, and just really understanding that what he sacrificed and what we all sacrificed for him and for the dream and what we've created is actually happening. You know, I, I can't even think about it. It'd be fucking incredible. Everyone on our team right now feels like the sharpest they've ever felt. I actually think, and I know I've heard Heath talk about it, that we might win the team trophy, like for the whole thing with just our academy, which is unreal. We're gonna beat Gracie Baja, we're gonna beat Checkmat, we're gonna beat fucking Atos. Like we're gonna beat all of them this time. Um, I don't even think this has like ever been done where like one small affiliation or one small academy has just beaten everyone else, but we're gonna fucking do it. We've been working towards this for over a decade. I think this is the one that's gonna really happen at. Uh, this is the job that lets me train full time. I work here as security. This is my junior year summer going into my senior year. And uh, basically I work from either 8.30 to 1 a.m. or 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. so I can train seven days a week uh, with the guys. I'm supposed to be training Jackson, but uh, Jackson can't hang and he's like knocked out in the back seat right now. <laughs> Moving to uh, PSF during COVID has helped me so much mentally, physically, and emotionally. Before I got here, I was like, I just wasn't in the right headspace. And when I got here, one of my first nights here, I was sleeping sleeping on the crash pad at the gym and he like walked in and he was like you want to see see something and he like opened up like the barrel there, there's like a barrel of stuff and there's 30 and 40 plus like worlds and pans medals there all there and i was like this is where i need to be 
Like this is this is how I'm gonna achieve everything. I'd love to win gold at the Nogi Pans, but if I don't, and I can at least help Heath's dream come to fruition, I feel like I, I'm still winning. I'm still helping a legacy, and I'm helping Heath's dream that's been going on for 20 years. This is something Heath has been trying to pull together for a long time. I think he said close to 30 years and life. And like I said, we've built this off of our own sacrifices. We've got people from all around the world who have left their families and their jobs just to be here for this one goal. I live in a fucking van, you know, right outside the gym. George does the same. Andrew lives in a box. It's crazy. People are sleeping on the mats, so. If we win a gold medal as a team, it's gonna be fucking incredible. Not just the jujitsu that Heath has given everybody, but just changing people's lives and like helping everyone along the way. It's, it's hard to give back to Heath. Like, like I usually can't even pay him back for tournaments and stuff. And like, thank you doesn't really feel like enough, but it's, sometimes it's like the only thing you can, you can really do. Man, if we could win that, that's the biggest thank you that we can give back because you know the money and all that that don't matter like being happy and doing it all like doing it and doing it all together that's that's the best way to thank him and like that's that's what I want to do I've come a long way from sleeping on tie pads and stealing soap out of the laundry mat this is the year we crack some fucking skulls yeah when I first got here uh, the team was actually leaving for the last year's Nogi Pins. At the time, I didn't really know like what level that was. They were all like ready to go in war zone, like in war mode. After training with the guys for like six, seven months, man, I got to see like what, what the work that they actually had put in for that. And like the team took second. So, you know, they came back and they were, they were like, they weren't settled, like they weren't happy at all. I've been training wrestling the highest levels my whole life. And now that I'm training jujitsu, I'm starting to really, it's opening my eyes to like the level of, just the level that I'm at now. I'm actually like seeing my full potential. Uh, I'm not stressed all the time anymore about cutting weight or doing this or doing that, going to class. It's like now I can actually live and like do what I want. I'm in the best fucking shape I've ever been in my whole life. And I feel good. My head's, I'm thinking straight and I'm just living clean and it's just been all around incredible. I'm just happy. And uh, I'd be lying if I told you I wasn't nervous. This is probably the most nervous I've ever fucking been before a tournament. I don't want to disappoint. I don't want to lose. So like, I got a lot riding on this, man. And I know that it's more than just me. Like I'm doing this shit for Heath and the team. I know they took second last time and like, we ain't taking second again. We're here to win this shit for Heath. Growing up at the gym and in the gym life, Heath has kind of been like a second dad to me. So my junior year of high school, he let me move in and bunk with his two younger sons. And he practically treated me like a son. So, and he would never let me give back, even though that really there wasn't much I could do. So me giving back was competing and training on the mats. He's been obsessed with this when he was a little kid, so I know how much this goal means to him. I'm gonna have that thought in my mind before every single fight, and this will be my way of showing gratitude for everything he's ever done for me. And I go to work. I work in a feed mill and do a 10 hour day, and then I go straight to the gym and lift for two hours, throw in some cardio if I am cutting weight, it just depends. And then I head over to the gym downtown at Pedigo Submission Fighting, and. I do two and a half hours there. And then as soon as I leave, I go home, get her ready for bed, then wake up, do it all over again. And just having her, that's no excuse. I mean, you still have to put in the work every day, just like every other professional athlete. Honestly, having her, it's a blessing. It gives me the extra drive to put in more because I have to achieve more. What would it mean to come in first? Everything. So I was 14 years old when I started with Pedigo. Heath was a purple belt, and then Chad and Andrew were both white belts whenever I started. So to go from winning local Naga tournaments to potentially winning the biggest IBJJF tournament in the world, it would be incredible. It would literally mean everything to us.
mission is the 2021 Nogi Pans. The objective is to win the 2021 Nogi Pans. Last year we got second place. We missed by three first, okay? Especially you blue belts and purple belts. You have to step up, make things happen, all right? That's the mission. Let's go. Make sure you're there deep. Make sure you're deep. You see everybody looking? Everybody paying attention? Because there's a lot of you, many of us, many of us. You have to believe that you're going to win. I want to tell you a quick story. In 1960, a professor, chemist, he did an experiment. He had a mouse. He took a mouse, a rat, he put it inside the water. Okay? The rat could tread water. For how long before it drowned? 15 minutes. 15 minutes, it started to sink. The professor took him out, put him down, let him rest. When he put him back in the water, do you know how long he could swim? 60 hours. 60 hours the second time because he had hope and he knew that sooner or later someone was gonna pull him out of the water. Nobody has ever expected us to win. Now they know. Now they know we're here. Remember that when you're out there. Believe in yourself, believe in each other. If we have someone on the mat, I want 15 people over there. Be loud, be intimidating. Leave everything out there every time. Think about the rat. 60 hours the second time. When you think you can do five pull-ups, you get tired on the fourth one. You think you can do 20, you get tired on the 19th one. So believe that you're gonna win the entire time. The whole time. Believe that your teammates are gonna win. You're never out of the match until the fucking match is over. Today, today, we're gonna make history. No major team has ever won. Never, they've never won a major tournament. Today, we're gonna change that. We're gonna concrete our team in the legacy of Jiu Jitsu forever. Listen, there's a lot of us. People walk through the door. They come in in twos or threes or fours. We come in in 50. Every mat, if anybody needs the list, all right? We can do this, we will do this. PSF on three. One, two, three. PSF! Let's go. Let's go. Go out there and fucking, a lot of people like to close out the vision with their teammates, but listen, we're gonna roll hard as fuck like we do every single day in the gym. Bang every single day, it's nothing new. We're only here for fucking a day. We're gonna try to get as many rolls in this fucking comp as we can. Okay. Teammate, non teammate, it don't fucking matter. So, status update so, all adults, uh, normal visions are they're finished. Uh, little Jacob, gold, him and Tad fought in the finals, they both got to the finals, gold and silver. Uh, no closeouts with us. They have the match. We have them do the match. I don't want them later on feeling like, you know, maybe they shouldn't have done it. So I think the best guy should win. So even though we're from the same team and they sleep in the same house, we had them uh, fight it out. Marshall Roberts, man, MVP. He actually lost in the finals to uh, Gino Morelli. They wrestled for Penn State. Close match. He did good. Killed it. Uh, silver medal for Marshall in the middle. And then next it was heavyweight. It was... Uh, uh, Sam Reiner, Sam Reiner, uh, he got a bronze, and Michael Pixley dominated the division of heavyweight, uh, submitted everybody, I believe, uh, for gold, and uh, Tristan Overrig, Tristan uh, was a gold medal in the super heavyweight division. We decided for the uh, for the open division, we're going to go with Jacob Borneman, lightweight, and Tristan Overrig, super heavy, so that should start here about 5 o'clock, so at uh, Black Belt, Wiltsey, Andrew Wiltsey, Lost in the finals to Jefferson, so silver medal for Andrew at the medium heavy division. Let's see where we're at right now. We should be on top right now by a pretty good margin, I think. So, uh, you know, PSF's in first right now, the 38, check mat and Alliance are on our tail, so these are gonna be the two teams we, teams we gotta, gonna battle it out with. So. Uh, the opens are big. We gotta hammer them out in the opens, and uh, right now we're in first, but a like, long way to go. So let's go.
So we're coming up on the semifinals. Jacob Borneman and Tristan Overig are both in the semifinals, the open weight. So open weight is from rooster to ultra heavy. That means that everyone who, who meddled can all sign up for the open. And then the, uh, that way you can see who the best person out of all the adult belts is. So uh, Jacob Borneman's a lightweight, so it's a huge deal for him to be in there. One thing that I want to mention too is uh, uh, in our hometown, it's like uh, when, we, when we post things, people don't realize how huge um, w winning these tournaments are, being being on the podium at, at, at a Pans and a Worlds, because our team is constantly up there, so they think it's just a normal thing, and it's, uh, you know, like an everyday thing, uh, like winning the regional baseball tournament or something like that. So I, I, I want to mention, like, Tad and and little Jacob uh, 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 fighting for the finals, and that's just such a huge, huge deal. And... Uh, uh, with, with both of these guys in the semis, they, they, they have a chance to uh, compete for the first and the second place. And that's just, it's just such a huge deal, man, to, to even medal out of open, how long a team uh, a team win first and second place in a major open like that. So it's a it, it's a huge, huge deal for us. It's the first time for us. And uh, man, we're really excited. The guys, just like uh, Tad and little Jacob, they'll, they'll have the match. We don't do any closeouts at our gym. Something that's happened with closeouts kind of in our sport, it's kind of fucked shit up when you got two guys from uh, one team. Now they're, they're putting them on both sides of the brackets because a lot of these gyms won't actually have a fight and uh, see who's the best. You know, they they, they they use it to kind of cruise through. But at, at our gym, we, uh, we, we we fight for the medal, man. Can you imagine Tom and Terry Brands um, uh, closing out the division together? That's what I used to always think to myself. So it's imperative that the guys have the match and, and, and see who whoever whoever deserves to have the first place should have the first place. There shouldn't be any gifts and uh, you should care more about your teammates and yourself than that. And I think it's important to, to, to hammer the match out and uh, make sure that the person that deserves it has it. So hopefully we can get these guys in the finals and they can have the match. It'll be a first time for us and a really major, major, uh, major thing in our team's, you know, our, our team's history. So we're super excited. Tristan, yes, surprise from Master Chad. No. Master Hawkins. Can we do it together? So Tristan coming down with the, the, the open blue belt title. Um, it's always been one, one of my, like, uh, yeah, I've always looked really forward as a coach to to give a belt out on the podium uh, uh, for, for the open division. We gave out Andrew Woods, who got his black belt on the podium at Nogi World. So uh, Chad Hawkins and I giving uh, Tr Tristan his belt on the podium, it, it, it was an incredible, like, uh, surprise for him and for the guys. It was really, really exciting. And, uh, man, he... He, last year, he, uh, you know, he kind of shit the bed a little bit. You know, he, he, we had high hopes for him, and he came, and he didn't, he didn't really, um, you know, uh, 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 come out. But this year, man, he just kind of like dominated everybody. And his toughest match of the whole tournament was uh, Jacob Borneman, teammate, you know, in the final. So, you know, there's no questions at all that he was, uh, you know, uh, ready for that promotion, man. And it was really, really uh, badass to. To, for him to get it up on the podium and uh, you know everybody get to see that and j just that moment in time you know looking back on that and the, we, we having that on uh, you know as part of this like documentary and this uh, you know thing is is really badass so like as, as a coach for me it was killer even as a fan for me it was badass for Tristan it was probably you know one of the most incredible things I'm sure he'll remember forever so um, yeah that, that, that was something like uh, that was really amazing and uh, you know I, I, I've, I've always wanted to do it so but overall, bro, the day couldn't have been better. Holy shit. The, the day could have been I mean, maybe a couple moves could have went a different way, but we're in a great spot for tomorrow. He's been trying to he's been trying to win this for 20 years, bro. We've never been this close. So hopefully it's this time. If everything if everything goes as planned tomorrow, PSF will be the reigning hand. It's gonna be the best thing. Everybody's ever. gonna be PSF for life. Brown and purple adult tomorrow, baby. Let's go. In third place, Atos Jiu-Jitsu. In second place, 